there and welcome to tonight's video uh, tonight I'm gonna try and talk about this uh, new favorite film of mine which is called The Neighbor and it stars William Fitchner and here it is uh, th this is the blu-ray version which is um, you can still get it but it's only available from Germany and I don't know why because uh, it's a damn good movie and William Fitchner uh, is very good in it uh, I think this is I'm not sure if this is the first film he's done where he's the main actor in the film um, because he's usually like a character actor he was in um, that movie with Nicolas Cage called Drive Angry he played um, the character called the accountant I think it was called so he was, he was trying to track down Nicolas Cage and like do away with him or something um, he was really good in that as well but this one is especially good and it's nice to see him in a lead performance in the film and he carries the film very well actually and um, the film's basically about uh, this guy who lives with his wife in a suburban neighborhood in America somewhere I forget exactly where about it's set but um and then he I think he's a writer or something he's always at his typewriter you know I think or on his computer or something uh, writing stuff and uh, he sits close by his uh, window and you can see into the street and in his uh, neighbor's garden and then one day some new neighbors move in next door you see and um, one of his neighbors is played by Michael Rosenbaum who you probably know better from the TV show Smallville he was in that show for years playing Lex Luthor I believe he's a very good actor him Michael uh, Rosenbaum sometimes I uh, get his name mixed up I keep wanting to say Nosenbaum for some reason I don't know why but he's excellent in this as well and he almost nearly steals the show from William William Fitchner Fitchner rather it's very hard to say that name Fitchner I'm not even, not even sure if that's the right way to uh, pronounce it. It might be Finkner or something, but I'm saying Fitchner. Anyway, Michael Rosenbaum, uh, like I say, he almost steals the show from uh, William Fitchner in a few scenes because, um, see, what happens in the film is William Fitchner kind of takes a fancy to Michael Rosenbaum's w wife, and they haven't been married for too long, I think. And uh, so he keeps watching her out of his window while he's sitting at his uh, desk uh, writing on his, uh, I think it's his computer. I forget whether it's a computer or a, lap, or a, um, a typewriter. It's one of the two anyway. Anyway, he keeps watching her and um, and then he starts to hear like little like quarrels breaking out between the two. Like uh, Michael Rosenbaum shouting at his wife and it sounds like he might be uh, abusing her, beating her about a bit and stuff. And so he keeps... Uh, he starts like um, before all this starts taking place he he finds a few opportunities to start talking to um, the girl next door the uh, will, uh, Michael Rosenbaum's uh, wife I forget the character names of these I'm not very good with the character names I've only watched it once so far but I was uh, I was riveted uh, all the way through while watching this film uh, it's one of the best ones I've seen in a while actually it's very underrated I don't know why it wasn't um, a bigger hit you know I don't know why it was more popular more successful in the front cover I don't know if you've noticed this but a lot of uh, movies especially Hollywood movies have this going on where, where they show one side of, of an actor's face so they've got just one of their eyes shown and um, now I'm pretty certain this is known as one eye symbolism uh, I mentioned this in a video that I did ages ago and I showed a lot of uh, DVD covers where um, you know the cover artwork featured this with the one eye symbolism thing going on there's loads of them like I believe Lucy's like that um, one hour photo with Robin Williams is like that there's uh, there's literally tons of them um, and um, I'll not go into the details about that but it's basically to do with uh, Freemasonry and stuff because um, a lot of people reckon that um, these people run Hollywood and the film industry and pretty much everything else actually so uh, they always put that like you know that symbols and codes either in the movies or on the covers or both it's usually both actually some of the covers don't have too many symbols on but 
some of the bigger films usually have them on, but this wasn't that big, it wasn't that popular, so I don't know why it's got it on this one. Probably because he's up to no good, sort of, in the film, because he, he's married, and yet he's uh, sort of secretly lusting after their new neighbours, uh, the new couple next doors, well, the, the new neighbour's wife, basically. Um, another thing I noticed about the cover is uh, there's a shot of the girl, uh, Michael Rosenbaum's wife next door, th silhouetted uh, behind some blinds here, and it kind of reminded us a bit of the uh, front cover of me, one of my favourite films of all time, Brian De Palma's Body Double. Uh, it reminded us of that because it looks kind of similar. But on the front cover of that, it's got like a guy silhouetted looking through um, some blinds at the girl uh, on the other side, uh, which was uh, Melanie Griffith, I believe, on the cover of that one. Um, as you, you probably noticed, it doesn't say the neighbor on the front of this. It just says Der Natchbar. On, I don't know how you pronounce that either, but that's what it looks like to me. It sounds like it's the name of a chocolate bar or something, but it's actually uh, actually means the neighbor. So it's not a chocolate bar, as you can see. It's an actual Blu-ray, and it's in a slimline case because all German Blu-rays, to my knowledge, come in slimline cases. I wish the UK ones did, but they don't for some reason. They're in them fatter ones, thick cases and stuff. Hang on, you have to excuse me for a second. My eyes itching like I don't know what. Uh, so I must scratch it. I get itchy eyes a lot. I've got like allergies and stuff. I mean, I suffer from hair fever, but it's not. It's not the time of the year for hair fever, I don't believe. But I still get itchy eyes. Parents, it's just don't uh, do it again. I do apologise. And um, on the back cover, there's some nice little pictures. And uh, I write up about the film and the plot, of course, but I can't read that because I don't speak German. Uh, so I can't read it, naturally. And I don't know if there's any special features on here. There might be, but uh, they're probably in German. I haven't checked yet. I haven't had this on yet, so... I can't give you a review of the uh, picture transfer, although I did see um, I did see an HD version of this because I have watched it, but I, uh, I got that off online somewhere, and um, I'm not sure if it was the same transfer as what's on this Blu-ray, but it might have been. But that that transfer was very good, very sharp, very detailed. I believe it was shot digitally, probably with an Aria Alexa camera or something similar. So those films are usually pin sharp a lot of them. Although a lot of films that are shot digitally, uh, some directors sort of mess around with the picture quality and sometimes add like a film grain effect. And sometimes they, uh, they make them look a bit softer, like take the uh, sharp edge off. Because digital photography usually comes out sharper for some reason. And I don't know whether that's to do with the type of cameras they're using and the lenses that's on those cameras. Because I read somewhere that if you shoot on 35mm film, Film has, well I know it has no physical resolution like digital does, so the actual quality of the image on film is higher because um, no amount of digital resolution, whether it's 1080p, 4K or more than that, can match film, the film, actual film frame resolution. And if you go into like 65mm or 70mm, that's even higher, so film has the highest resolution. But for some reason, a lot of films, especially the older ones, don't look quite as sharp as these digitally shot movies. For some reason, I don't know why. Maybe someone out there has the answer to that. If you do, uh, I'd pl be pleased to hear from you. Uh, see what you've got to say about that. Maybe you can clear that one up. But uh, apart from that, um, I must point out the, um, the, uh, the scenes near the end of this film are very tense. And I guarantee you'll be riveted to your seat if you watch this film to the end, because the ending scenes, uh, it was quite, it was quite, uh, it affected me a bit, actually. Um, you know, it makes you feel a bit, um, like, almost like, 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 um, tears forming in your eyes type of thing. It was a bit, uh, it was quite, uh, something the way they did it. It was very well done, you know, and his performance was excellent. And so was, um, Michael Rosenbaum. And the girl that played his wife as well. She was excellent as well. As was the woman that played uh, William Fitchner's wife. She was good, but she wasn't in it as much as the other uh, characters, I don't think. Uh, his wife, in the film, he, his marriage doesn't seem too, too uh, like a happy, uh, a perfectly happy marriage. 
I think his wife seems a bit like like she's a bit um, bored with him or something or she's not that keen on him maybe not so keen on him as she used to be type of thing so anyway it's a very interesting film it's sort of a cross between a drama and a thriller it's sort of a romantic stroke I don't know psychological type thriller type thing but it has dramatic a lot of drama in it type of thing so but it's uh, very good and uh, I've just noticed he's also holding a pair of binoculars I think on the front cover I don't actually remember him using binoculars in the film but maybe I just don't remember because I've only seen it once like I say but um, it's, all, it's almost like they're going for like a cross between like I say a body double and rear window type of thing on the front cover of this uh, that's what it looks like to me so uh, given that sort of um, uh, you know that sort of um, feeling to it you know that sort of um, thing you know I don't know how to put in words or what I'm trying to say here it's um it's good it's going for that sort of um similar sort of scenario type of thing you know um you know so sort, of, sort of paying homage to to rear window type of thing maybe i don't know uh i'm not sure who directed this offhand i can't remember and uh this has dts uh hd master audio by the way 5.1 i think it's 5.1 anyway and this is region b locked so if you live in america You'll have to have a multi-region Blu-ray player, I'm afraid, if you want to get this one, I think. I haven't tested it to see if it is actually region B locked, but it does say region B on the back. But that doesn't always guarantee it's going to be locked. Because some of the American ones that have region A on the back aren't always region A locked. You can play them on any UK Blu-ray player. So anyway. Um, so I'm just trying to think, is there anything else? Uh, uh, I could mention about this that I forgot to mention. Um, well, yeah, there's a few other things actually. Um, you know, I was mentioning about this um, symbolism of the one eye thing, like the Freemason stuff. Well, if you watch this movie, there's a few scenes. There's like a wall or a fence between, obviously, between the, uh, his neighbor's garden. And in one scene, um, there's a, there's like all these like diamond symbols across the top of the fence or the wall and that's another one of these symbols that they use apparently and um, if you watch any Hollywood movie actually it doesn't even have to be a Hollywood movie any movie that's on blu-ray or online or whatever, on Netflix or whatever I guarantee it no matter which movie you watch there will be symbols of diamonds in it somewhere you know they'll be there somewhere and I know you skeptics out there will be saying, well, diamonds is a popular symbol, I guess. You know, you're going to see diamonds someplace, no matter what you watch. But that's not the reason, because um, they're always there. <laughs> they're, they're always there, not only once, but s several times during the movie. So, it, it, you know, these symbols mean things to certain people, so that's why they're there. I don't know the exact meaning behind it, but uh, if you remember good old... Donald Trump, he used to always make that hand sign with a little diamond shape in it. So, there you go. Anyway, enough about that. And uh, I'm going to go off and uh, eat some uh, apple slices now with grapes. Just a few grapes in the apple slice pack. And a banana, I think. So, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, somewhat something of a review that I've just tried to do here. I'm, I'm absolutely no good at doing reviews. But um, I did enjoy this film, but so when I enjoy a film a lot and I can follow the story well, and sometimes I can do, uh, you know, halfway sort of semi-decent sort of something re resembling a, a review. Anyway, so um, thanks for watching, and, and if you've got any, oops, and if you've got any questions or anything, just pop it down in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Oh, and just before I go... There's still a, a DVD of Rocket Man about Elton John's early music career, etc. Up for grabs. If anyone would like to uh, receive that, you just have to tell us the answer to the question asked in my previous video to this one. And I'll send it off to you in the post as soon as possible. Because nobody uh, so far has claimed that one. I'm very surprised. Though. I'm very surprised no one's tried to claim it. But never mind, that's the way it is. So it's up for grabs if you want a copy. You just have to answer that question, and it's yours. Okay, the, 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 the next person, the first one to get it right, the question to the, um, well, 
the question of me giveaway competition thing in my last video. And the next person to get it right will we'll win it and I'll send it off to you. Anyway, that's all from me tonight. So don't forget to subscribe. And please can you give us a little like if you enjoyed any of this video. And I'll be very thankful for that. So uh, that's all, all, all from me for now. So I'll see you all next time. So bye for now. Ta-ra now.